if you are a resident of the United States, you might be familiar with the case of O.J. Simpson. If you're not, here's a summary. O.J. Simpson was a famous footballer and an actor, but one day he was arrested on suspicion of the murder of his ex-wife and her friend. Even with multiple pieces of evidence and a lengthy trial, the ex-football player was found not guilty and currently roams free. Because this case had taken the spotlight, a similar case from California could not make it to the front pages of many newspapers. An equally thrilling trial was being conducted around the same time when O.J. Simpson was arrested. In August 1993, the sheriff of Orange County, California, was informed about a brutal murder that had taken place in Mission Viejo. The police officers who arrived at the scene were shocked to find the bloody crime scene where Jennifer G., a young woman, had been murdered inside her own house in broad daylight. Adding to the horror, they discovered the body of a five-month-old infant lying in his crib. With a semi-confession in hand, the trial should have been straightforward. But with multiple trials and one police error, the culprit currently lives free, unaffected by the crime that had taken place. that I have today is one straight out of a TV series. The plot is as follows. A wealthy businessman from the USA starts an affair with someone half his age in China. They were so much in love that he flew back to the United States, got her a house in the same city where his wife and kids lived. The wife finally finds out about the affair and soon the lives of three people is turned into a horror show. Hi, my name is Thanvi, and today we are off to the United States of America. This is probably one of the most scandalous cases I have read about in a while. I don't think I can tag the murders as revenge-driven. Fueled by anger and narrow-minded thinking, the deaths of Jennifer G and Kevin Peng could have been avoided if the adults just decided to think before they acted. The story has three main characters. Zheng Jim Peng was a 49-year-old wealthy businessman who owned a company named Ranger Electronics Communications located in San Diego with factories in Taiwan, Malaysia and China and sold CB or Citizens Band radios to the police worldwide. During his prime time, his net worth was recorded around $200 million in the 1990s. When this case took place, He lived with his wife named Lisa Peng and his two teenage sons. Lisa Peng was a 44-year-old housewife. Now, I don't know anything about her occupation before she got married, but it's been said that she had to let go of her career in order to take care of the house, her sons and her husband. During a business trip to mainland China in 1992, Jim met a beautiful manager who worked in the public relations department at the hotel where he was staying. Their first meeting was straight out of a novel. The hotel had some kind of presentation or performance going on. And while in the lobby, Jim, who was only 5 feet and 6 inches tall, stood behind a tall person and could not see the performance. While trying to peek over the taller person's shoulder, he asked her to move aside which soon sparked a conversation between the two. The tall and beautiful person was none other than Jennifer G, a 24-year-old living in China with her parents. Their first meeting became a core memory for both, and soon they started dating. Now, I don't have any information when Jennifer met Jim in China. She knew about his marriage life or anything of that sort. But since they wanted to spend more and more time together, Jim decided to bring Jennifer to the US and got her a job in his office in California. 
he even started giving her five thousand dollars a month, which is about eleven thousand dollars right now, so that she can start a business affiliated with his main office. He later admitted to the police officials that he wanted to start a business in China, and since Jennifer was a citizen of the country, it would be easier for him to do so with her help. In addition. He also set up an apartment in Mission Viejo, which was only a few miles away from the house that he shared with his wife and kids. Lisa slowly got a hint that Jim was having an affair behind her back. She found a woman's clothing which did not belong to her in the house. When she confronted Jim about it, he did not even deny that he was indeed having an affair. He admitted that the clothing belonged to a female friend. Enraged, Lisa went to Jim's office to find the female friend that owned the clothing. And once she saw Jennifer, she realized that she was the one with whom Jim was having an affair. Lisa confronted Jennifer, thinking and hoping that she may not have been aware of Jim's marriage, but was shocked to find out that she was fully aware and refused to leave him. which only infuriated Lisa further after Lisa's confrontation with Jennifer Lisa began finding more and more women's clothing in the house enraged she started cutting up the clothes with scissors when things reached a boiling point she asked Jim to terminate Jennifer's employment and end their affair but he nonchalantly denied her request according to a reddit post Jim might be a big businessman but he was still very old fashioned. He made it clear that he will not leave Lisa to stay with Jennifer because he did not believe in divorce implying that Jennifer will always be his second woman. Jim was digging himself into a deeper hole every day and things took a turn for worse when Jennifer became pregnant. Since Jim and Jennifer started dating in China, the country had a one child policy which stated that at a given time a couple in China was allowed to have only a single child and a second child or a child conceived illegitimately would either be forcefully adopted or would be termed illegal which meant that the second child would not have any kinds of documents issued by the government including a birth certificate and basically won't have a proof of being a chinese citizen since jim and lisa were living in the united states they could have a second child jim and jennifer on the other hand faced a challenging situation with the pregnancy because of the illegitimacy of their relationship therefore jennifer stayed in the united states and kept her pregnancy secret according to jennifer's parents till the time of her death they had no idea that they even had a grandchild in march 1993 jennifer and jim had a son named kevin the new parents were delighted with the birth of their son but this did not remain constant just 5 months later the bodies of 25 year old jennifer and 5 month old kevin were found in their apartment On the afternoon of 18th August 1993, Jim decided to visit Jennifer and his son at their apartment in Mission Viejo. He found the apartment locked and assumed that the two might have gone to finish their chores for the day. Thinking that the tasks would not take a lot of time, he decided to wait in the apartment manager's office. After a certain time had passed, he started calling Jennifer and when the phone calls went unanswered he became worried he decided to check the house again and when he tried to open the door he found it unlocked once he stepped inside the house and turned on the lights he found Jennifer lying on the couch touching her shoulder he discovered that her body had already turned cold he immediately ran to a neighbor and called the police to report the situation upon searching the entire apartment the police found the body of the 5 month old baby named Kevin 
who had suffocated under a blanket in his crib. Once the autopsy was conducted, they found that Jennifer had 18 stab wounds on her body and a bite mark on her arm. The police started investigating the murders of Jennifer G and Kevin Peng and narrowed down their list of suspects to two names, Jim Peng and Lisa Peng. As they dwelled deeper into the investigation, they found out about Jim's affair with Jennifer and the occasions when Lisa threatened Jim to break his and Jennifer's relationship. Jim had a solid alibi though. During the time of the murders, Jim was on a business trip to China and had airline tickets to prove his absence from the country. When the police asked Jim about his relationship with Jennifer, he admitted that he loved her deeply. But even if he loved her, he knew there were certain things that the two had to face together, indicating the 25 years age gap between the two and their relationship tagged as an extramarital affair. With Jim's name off the list, the police decided to bring Lisa Peng for questioning. One of the crucial pieces of evidence in the case was the bite mark on Jennifer's arm. Five months after the crime had taken place and with the DNA match from the bite mark on Jennifer's arm to Lisa's DNA, the police arrested Lisa for the murder of Jennifer G and Kevin Peng. According to the police, Lisa attacked Jennifer with a knife and the two had a fight, which ended up with Lisa stabbing Jennifer. Later, she went into Kevin's room and smothered him with a pillow. When Lisa was questioned, she denied her involvement with the murder. Even when the police presented the DNA evidence that they had collected, the officials were surprised when Jim backed his wife and insisted that his wife was completely innocent. While talking to the press reporters, Jim talked about Lisa and stated that he believed his wife of 21 years was completely innocent and she was not aware of the baby that Jim and Jennifer had. This might have been an act because soon Jim asked the detectives to permit him to talk to Lisa alone. The police allowed Jim to talk to her, a decision which will come back to ruin the entire case that they had worked on so far. Once Jim entered the interrogation room, the police switched on the mic and started recording their conversation. In the room, Lisa and Jim were fighting. Jim asked why she killed Jennifer and why she had stabbed her. Lisa maintained her act of innocence and defended herself, saying that there was indeed an altercation, but Lisa never took the first swing. Jennifer just fell on the floor and somehow managed to stab herself in the process. And if I may add, for 18 different times. The police knew that the killings were not a result of self-defense. According to them, the only motive for the crime would be to eradicate Jim's entire new family, which sadly involved the kid as well. With all the evidence in their hands, the case was up for trial. The prosecutors were confident that with DNA evidence, Lisa could be sentenced to life in prison. I should add that during the investigation and the trial, the knife which was used to stab Jennifer 18 times was never found. According to the medical officer, the knife would need to be long enough to pierce the body from front and back with a single stab. During the first trial in 1995, Jim admitted to his feelings for Jennifer and how she had decided to stay with him in the United States. Jim was defending his wife's actions, commenting that Lisa never knew about his and Jennifer's baby. She was only aware of the affair that they had. When Lisa was asked about Jennifer, she cried so much that the courtroom had to break for recess. During the first trial, the jury members were never able to reach a decision and so Lisa was not convicted in the crime and the first trial resulted in a hung jury. 
during the second hearing at the municipal court in 1996 the prosecutors filed for additional charges which could result in death penalty for lisa in front of the reporters jim confessed to calling lisa on the day of the murder he admitted that once he had called the police he immediately called lisa lawyer schuman defended lisa saying that even if the dna evidence which was collected by the police matched lisa it still wasn't enough to send someone to jail for their entire life according to ronald cafferty a deputy district attorney who was fighting against lisa stood adamant with the dna evidence and suggested a harsh sentence for her because of the death of kevin cafferty mentioned that one does not kill a baby due to self defense as lisa had mentioned even with the fear of a child becoming an eyewitness a 5 month old baby would not have been able to be one considering his age along with the dna the police found two buttons near the crime scene which belonged to lisa's clothes jim found them on the ground and even picked one up when he went to call the police the buttons simply proved that lisa was indeed present when the murders took place Cafferty mentioned that when Lisa found Jennifer's clothes, she also found the clothes of a child inside the house before the murders took place. With all the evidence pointing at Lisa being the killer, the jury convicted her to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole during her second trial. By this point, the case had garnered a lot of attention in Asia. Due to the dramatic events in the case, the people were eager to know each and every decision of the case in taiwan and china lisa and her lawyers decided to appeal to the court and got a third trial in 1995 5 years after the murders of jennifer and kevin one of the biggest issues that the prosecutors had to face was the way lisa peng was arrested lisa was interrogated for 9 hours straight and despite multiple requests for an attorney lisa peng was never given one during that time the us law states that a suspect has the right to get a lawyer something the police officials did not comply with unable to communicate lisa's constitutional rights her lawyers were able to turn the case in their favor the police however backed up their unit denying the accusation of the 9 r interrogation and stated that a district attorney was always present during the investigation according to lisa's lawyers she had asked for an attorney 6 times between that interrogation period but was never given one the defense attorney also stated that once the police officials noticed that lisa might give in they decided to ask jim to talk to his wife and recorded the entire conversation Now this is a contradicting piece of information in some articles it's been written that Jim asked to talk to his wife alone and the police simply recorded their conversation that they had while other reports mention that police were the ones who asked Jim to talk to her and recorded their conversation During this entire time I am not sure if Jim was aware that their conversation was being recorded The attorney stated that even someone innocent of the crime would break down after a rigorous interrogation and would give in when they saw their family members. They asked the judge and the jury members to negate the statements made by Lisa during her interrogation where she confessed to biting her arm and attacking Jennifer even if it was for self-defense. Whatever the answer would be, the attorney managed to dismiss all these statements. they knew that the case would tilt towards their favor since the only substantial evidence that the police had was the dna evidence the third trial did not reach any verdict and was deemed a hung jury the case finally reached a verdict during its fourth trial in 2001 lisa was sentenced to 11 years in prison without a possibility of parole and was asked to immigrate to taiwan and banned her entry into the united states 
after her deportation. Lisa had sort of become a hero in Taiwan. The women in the country were tired of their husbands having affair and getting mistresses from mainland China and the USA. They might have felt Lisa's actions as worthy since all the women felt that anger of having unfaithful husbands after devoting their entire lives to them. The Taiwanese and Chinese newspapers were up to date with the case and never forgot to write anything about it. The case was even dubbed as the Chinese version of the O.J. Simpson case. It was even called the O.J. Simpson trial of Asia. On a very different note, Jim's company, Ranger Electronics Communication, was also summoned to the court for a very different reason. Avon Telecom Inc. was charged with illegally importing CB radios into the United States, in which Ranger Electronics also had a part to play. The case was resolved in 2000 and Jim Peng was dismissed from all the charges, though the US branch of Rangers Communications had to pay a fine of almost a million dollars. And this is all we know so far. Because of her good behavior and spending seven years in jail, she was eligible for parole and was transferred to an immigration and naturalization service facility in San Pedro and within a few weeks, she was sent back to Taiwan. Ranger communication still exists today. However, I could not find any information about Jim still being an active member of the company. Her two sons were aware of the crime committed by their mother, but they still missed her. There were no reports about her living conditions, whether she met her sons after she was sent back or not, whether she ever met Jim after the trials and or tried to mend their relationship, none of that information has ever been made public. Kevin Peng, the five-month-old baby, would have been in his early 30s if he was still alive. Lisa's kids would be in their 40s. Jim and Lisa would be in their 70s. If Jennifer never became a part of Jim's life, and if Jim had decided to let go of his narrow-minded approach and would have given a divorce to Lisa, the entire outcome of the situation would have been different. Sure, murdering the mistress out of anger still feels like a valid reason for crime, but killing the innocent five-month-old baby? I don't know. Lisa's anger was conceivable. She devoted her entire life to her husband, who never thought about the love that they shared and did not even deny the relationship that he had shared with Jennifer, nor even try to hide it. An act of anger changed the lives of Lisa, Jim, Jennifer and their children. Two of them had lost their lives, while the other four had to adjust themselves to a new one, one away from all the family love and support that they could have shared for the rest of their lives. for tuning into this episode of Shades of Macabre. If you liked this episode, please leave us a review wherever you are listening. Don't forget to subscribe or follow our podcast to be notified of our latest episodes and be the first one to hear the new case. You can find the images related to the cases in the episode description. And for more information or if you'd like to suggest a new case, head over to our Instagram and Twitter at Shades of Macabre. Shades of Macabre will be back next week. Till then, take care and be safe.